Good afternoon, everyone. Good morning, or perhaps even good evening. Thank you so much for dropping by for a spontaneous little 3D chill out session in which we're going to do well, perhaps something productive, perhaps something nice will come out at the end. We can never, we can never tell really when we do things in 3D. Madness Middles is here, and the Web Soul is here, and anyone else who's out there watching, thank you so much for dropping by. Appreciate you being here. It is one of those things that uh, sometimes I run out of time, and on Saturday, thank you so much for everyone who dropped by the Da stream. There, in which I did some face painting with Substance Painter. I had some other designs that I wanted to try my hand on. So I thought uh, maybe I can continue that today. And I need a bit of practice, like creative practice. And perhaps I can create a little redistributable pack that I can give away to supporters. Or I don't think it's going to be big enough to sell. But, you know, it'll, it'll be available from my coffee store. It's going to be very nice. DZ is here. How are you doing, buddy? Good to see you. He, uh, If you don't know DZ, I don't know if I have a shout out for you, buddy. I, I'm not sure if I have. I don't think I have. I will make one later. DZ is a vendor over on Renderosity. If you don't know his products, he makes uh, outfits for the Genesis 8 male, and he is quite the workhorse. I have to say prolific is the word we're looking for, prolific. So much appreciated that you're here. Let me go and bring some music out and about here, and then we can get going. Uh, music, I can hear it, you can hear it. It's awesome, we're all good. This is perfect. So yes, the designs I had, let me see if I still have the uh, um, Horizon references, that's it. And also, we'll see if the music's any good. If it isn't, then we can always, you know, pick something else. If the music's too loud, if it's too quiet, then please, please let me know, and I can make a little change there. So, and um, this is what I painted in Substance Painter on Saturday on the on the Necromancer character. But I had so many other references that might have worked out. So this is another one here, with the white streak uh, on the sides here, and then some some red facets. I might try that. And there's also this here, like a green and yellow type concoction. I'm going to go and try that. Also blue and white. This is nice. So the white layer is then above the blue layer. We'll see how we're going to fare with the mask here. But I'd like to kind of try all of these and at least try my hand on them and then see what they're going to look like on the DAS characters. This is kind of cool. <laughs> It's all about little triangles here. And I can see if I can make that kind of uh, continue that at the back of the head as well and see if I can blend that out at the at the bottom here. Okay, let's let's in fact start. Well start. In fact start. Nope, start with this one. Or there's also this one here, also a per personal favorite of mine. Like the purples. I might try that actually. I might go try with start with that. Hello Daja! How's it going? I'm going to go and start with a little bit of Das Studio. I can try all this on the Necromancer, actually. Um, could do, since he's already prepared. I already have him in my Substance project. Me too. The purple one is really cool. Let's get started with that, see if we can make it happen. <laughs> Very much all inspired by me having bought a PlayStation 5. It's uh, not actually by that. It's by... Um, uh, long story, really. I have been on the wait list with Sony for a while. Uh, but uh, not with Sony actually at Amazon. Let me show you what we did on uh, on Saturday here. Was that here? Yes, we need to go and load in a figure first, don't we? We can do that. Base character or someone else. Anyone male preferably. Maybe the snowman. He could wear face paint, couldn't he? That would be fun. <laughs> I think he could wear the face paint. Let's try that. So mean to do that on the snowman. <laughs> yeah, so I've been playing Horizon uh, Zero Dawn for a while on PC, and that was very inspiring. Great game. So sometimes it's not often that a game really kind of, you know, takes me in and I'm thinking, wow, that's just, that's just awesome stuff. And inspired by that, I bought Forbidden West for the PlayStation 4. I think it was kind of a mega pack that had the 4 and the 5 version in it or something. And I thought I'd love to have a PlayStation 5, but of course nobody can currently uh, buy one because they're just in such short supply. And I was on the wait list at Sony as well as Amazon, I think. And they spontaneously dropped me a line and said, hey, you can now order one if you want one. And we can deliver it the same day. And I did. And it arrived on Friday. So I've, I'm very new to the PlayStation 5. So one of those things. 
3D Arena, how's it going? Top of the morning or afternoon or evening for you. This is what the snowman looks like with the face paint. Not, not exactly, doesn't come out all that well, but that's because he's got white skin, so. <laughs> but it does work, it does work. That is, that is quite cool. Let's load in a human figure and then keep, keep playing with those, with those uh, designs. Maybe Michael? Michael is 8. I'm, I need somebody with, with the 8.1 status here. Ichabod, that's also 8. Don't I have anyone else? Lee is 8. Man Hippo, let's try him. He is, I think he's 8 as well. Let's do the no hair version. Face paint should work on him as well. Very cool. <laughs> late afternoon. Yes, it's late afternoon for me, yes. <laughs> and you've just been rendering all day. Awesome, awesome. Good to meet you. Yeah, so the face pack, this is going to be interesting. So this is a character by Alessandro. Let's see what the GeoShell looks like on him. So this might not work out. <laughs> but hey, but it does. So the white body, that is just because it's an eight character. And I think the visibility of the shell just needs to be adjusted a little bit. So torso needs to come off and that's basically it. But the face paint <laughs> is literally everywhere. This is quite an achievement <laughs> to turn the Genesis figure into, into someone like him. That is very cool. Yes, Alessandro's anthropomorphic hippo. Uh, currently used. Nope, that's on the, on the figure. This is the slider. <laughs> Crazy, huh? <laughs> I love that. Stuff you can do with the Genesis figure. You can even conceivably make like a like a teenage hippo character or something that isn't quite quite all that that much a hippo. You can just go and tone him down a little. <laughs> Crazy stuff. I love that. So face paint even works on him. I do I do like that. Also good skin tone, gotta say. Hours are fun. Okay, that's also not the kind of person we're looking for. We're looking for a person. And maybe I'll just stick with the Necromancer. I don't think I have any other 8.1 male characters here. I'll stick with him. Also, are we happy with the music? I think I might, I might just ping a different channel here. Something, was it, was it on, was it here? I think there was something in the beauty and fashion thing that I kind of like. I think I might go and try this. There. It's a bit more, you know, chilled. I like the chill vibes. Yes, meanwhile, let's go grab the substance painter and, and go to work. I think I'm going to stick with this character only because he's kind of set up so I don't have to re-import someone else. Even though I think I could, I could also try my hand at a couple of these designs on a female character. I think I have one that is kind of dream safe prepared, um, which is a version of the Jinx character. Jinx is nice because she has this dark complexion and uh, colorful paint strokes come out just so much better on her. I'll also grab my my trusty Wacom tablet. It's a really tiny one. This I use this here in my on my streaming setup. On my desk, I have a slightly larger version, the kind of the medium wireless version. And here I have a I have a tiny one, which is which is great. I can basically I'm balancing my keyboard and my 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 Wacom and a trackball all on my lap while doing this. It's kind of it's kind of crazy, but it works. <laughs> Mr. Chris. Woohoo! Subscribe at tier one. Thank you so much, Chris. That is awesome. Thank you for your support. I appreciate that. Cannot quite believe though. That is insane. 30 months in a row? That is how long is that? That's two and a half years. Really? I can't that I can't believe I've been on Twitch that long. That's insane. Chris, welcome! Wonderful to see you. Necromancer V2, that's the one that we started with. Let me give you a shout out. If you don't know Chris already, Chris is a vendor over on Renderosity. He streams he streams regularly here on Twitch, I believe five days a week, which is very cool. 
Yebis. Yebis 2? Who's Yebis? Where did that come from? I've never seen that before. Excellent stuff. If you want to find out more about how to build little props as well as clothing in Blender, Marvelous Designer, forward slash Clo, and bring all these things into Das Studio, Chris is your man. He is a graphics professional by trade and it's wonderful to hang out with him. I think he was streaming earlier today and I totally missed it. <laughs> wonderful to see so many friends here. So I'm thinking this was our Saturday's work. This here was, I believe, this was the tattoo. I might go and name that. No, that's not the tattoo. Where is the tattoo? Could have sworn that's a tattoo, isn't it? Yes, it is the tattoo. Substance plate, I just thinking about it. Let me just go name that uh, skeleton tattoo. And then this is green and this is white. And this here, all of this is gonna be our first kind of group. I'll just go and group that together into um, what we're going to call it design one. Let's just call it that. <laughs> or is it is that is that too unspecific? Let's call it green white tries. Maybe that's better. So the benefit is I can just go and switch that off and then literally go and start again with you know my next design this here is the skin and these are my base properties those are the ones that i can go and enable the uh the um hello there we go or i can go and enable and disable the opacity on and all that okay so let's get inspired then by the blue and by the purple and the light purple light purple and dark purple so let's let's see then. Misspelled that. First, I'll start with another fill layer, and I might just make that here the uh, light purple. I'll go and leave it as it is, and just go over to my properties with the color channel. I'm gonna go and pick myself kind of a dark purple. I'm thinking that is kind of almost that, right? It is. Wasn't there a way that I can go and hold control on this and then literally go over to another window? But with only one monitor, that's not going to be that's not going to be easy for me, is it? <laughs> I might just go and try my luck by eyeballing it. So this is kind of the dark purple. I'm thinking put that onto a swatch here too let's start with a black mask a snazzy brush and let's start painting so nope not that's that's not it here over here paint and then we'll go and pick ourselves uh, like a charcoal brush i think charcoal medium worked quite well charcoal medium that's it let's go do that is it is it f no f was in <laughs> f is the brush size in blender f is frame up character in substance painter of course <laughs> or get the rgb code in photoshop even better that is a good idea that is a really good idea let's do that <laughs> that is very cool let's try that so um this here pick foreground color i say like it's a good it's a good spot here like this and just go try that that is a really good idea kind of kind of debatable where the best spot is because it's kind of depending on the background light there as well maybe something like that let's try that that's a really good idea thank you websoul i like that copy that pop that into here use that code in here no there yes <laughs> make that a swatch that's much uh, that's much less saturated so kind of good i like the idea that we can change this uh, retrospectively as well very nice very nice and i'm thinking maybe we'll try this with a bit of symmetry make this a bit smaller and we're just painting with the with this right yeah, maybe a little bit more saturated, but we can change that after the fact. So I think last time I already 
uh, thought that the flow and opacity might have to come down a bit so that we don't uh, overpaint this completely. Yeah, I think that on. And also, I think I may have changed this over to 4K last time. Have I? Yes. Oh, sorry, 2K. I might go and put that back to 1K just because that's a bit more performant on my system. And then we can always do something else on the when it comes to um, when it comes to um, exporting it out. X switches between black and white, so when I play paint with black, then I erase my paint strokes, and uh, X changes between black and white. It's kind of nice here. I do actually feel I'm going to try my my other color here. I'll, I'll try to make it try to do this here. Paint with that. That's a dark one. Okay, so we've got the one streak here, and then we kind of have three above the eyes. One, two, three. The th third one is kind of longer, and that one then continues on to the to the mouth here. So like this here, start with that, perhaps. And then we have, we have them kind of going like that, I suppose. I do have pure ref as well. I could literally just go and bring this up as pure ref and have it on the screen at all times. That is also a possibility. Maybe we'll do that next time. <laughs> I'm not quite used to that just yet. So the first one is kind of over here. It's also, I feel like the brush could be a bit more broken up on the edges. So we'll do this in a couple of attempts here. It's like the second one is kind of here and then the third one goes something like that, I believe. Yeah, I think I need a slightly different brush. That's not so soft on the edge. It's something that's more, kind of more broken up. Could be like charcoal strong, could try that. Charcoal wide. Also a possibility, charcoal ramp. What are we ramping? Nope. Still calculating. <laughs> Give Substance Painter a second here. Strong at full frame. Fine. How about just regular charcoal? Does that? Oh, that does that. Okay, maybe maybe charcoal is not the way to go then. Maybe. Crystal cracks dirt. No, I don't think dirt is, is going to work here. I think there's also a way to search for Photoshop brushes. Carl's paint box. Whoops. Hello. <laughs> it's sometimes it's literally just a matter of trying out uh, what works. <laughs> Good thing he has a lot of a lot of surface on his body yeah we're kind of getting there van gogh blocky i think we're getting somewhere <laughs> um with photoshop elements i do you know i've never looked into that uh, program i don't know how how many features they've left out in elements to be honest uh, but if it does have basic painting you should be able to literally take out the texture uh, like the 2d texture make a layer on top of it and then just paint on that that should technically work i mean it does it would let me see um if we had if it has this this feature here right if i go and just uh, create a new a new um, layer here. If it has this layer feature here, Daja, then that should be possible. So usually what happens is that you have uh, something like a, 
like a texture underneath here. I'll just make it a solid color. Yeah, let's make it like this, this purple here. And then usually what you might be able to do is get a layer on top of this. And then if you can do something like that, um, like, uh, like this, if, if it has that feature that lets you essentially switch off this so that only the paint stroke remains, then yeah, I think you should be able to do it. If I make it a like, slightly crazier color here, make it make it red. If it has this feature, Darja, then you should be able to do it because then it's as easy as uh, importing or kind of opening uh, face texture that you've exported. Like, um, where is it? Is it in uh, face painting stream like that one? <laughs> if you had, let's take his face texture here. If we, open that it has perfect oh I see with with like uh, texture tiles that sort of thing yeah you could also use this I mean the, the problem with this is that you don't really know um, where exactly the paint stroke is is gonna end up on but uh, yeah but in in principle you can do that. So on a new layer, you just go and uh, and paint something on here. You, you, I think it also has um, uh, symmetry here. So if you were to do that, then you switch this off and just export that. You don't even have to, for testing, what you can do is you can leave all this in here and just save it as a layered Photoshop file. So make this PSD here and then put the PSD into your thing in Da Studio. Uh, can I show you that? I think I might be able to show you that if I go and say file save as and I'll just call this one here test so this is like literally the layered Photoshop document with the layers on right you can you can use that and literally put that on uh, on his face so that's something that you can do right yes yeah face with that I can I can imagine sometimes there's a there's a problem there so what you can do at least for the for the preview here is so you can probably just put it into his um, face you can also put it directly onto the geo shell that's also possible then you have the full uh, the full the full effect of the of the final outcome but just for just to see if it's all in the right place so you do this and then you go was it here and in was it in maps no it wasn't in maps it was in in here in maps and it was test so this psd file here if photoshop elements can do that you can just go and pop that right into here i uh, put it in the body didn't i duh i meant to put it in the face <laughs> obviously put it in the right channel Daja. <laughs> and jay don't tell people the wrong thing like this here. So PSD file goes directly on his face and these strokes, you can see them, whoops, you can see them basically live on his face. So if you now go back into Photoshop, this is kind of the, the clever bit here. If you say, um, well, I want to get rid of some of these things and I want to make it maybe put other things on, uh, on here with maybe a different color. You could do that, just save. So control S to save the whole layered PSD document. You can have more layers as well. And then back in uh, Das Studio, you can go and have on the surfaces tab, there's this little menu. You can enable refresh images or refresh images automatically. So this does it manually, like plonk, and then it pulls in the changes. And you can also, I believe, leave it on automatic and it's kind of trying to do this automatically let's see how successful we are if i just go and give him like you know a few x's on the on the cheek hit control uh, control s in photoshop so that's important that is um that this gets saved and then there we go that's automatically appearing on my character so quite nice and it kind of just refreshes this um, time and time again if you're in iray that refresh might not happen because that's just you know it's one of those things but yeah look at that so it kind of automatically happens and you can make new layers here oops add another layer on the top but you don't then have to export the uh, you know you don't have to export the 
<laughs> the JPEG out, reapply that and everything. Seconds later, just as the Sage comes in, <gasps> kaboom, there we go. So if you don't have access to Substance Painter, this is also a way to do um, face paint. Because you can, with, with Photoshop, you can do, you can turn this into an opacity map, you can turn it, you can cheat and turn it into the, the height map, get some more definition in there. And so everything is possible. <laughs> Crazy, isn't it? <laughs> the hidden features that you can <laughs> that you can discover even after years of working with that studio. I'm gonna go and switch this auto refresh off here and go back into Substance Paint and do some do some more crazy experiments. Yeah, but that's how it works. So quite quite funky, and that makes texturing life a lot um, a lot easier. Uh, we're gonna try to do this. I'm gonna try and find a brush that has these types of edges here. I don't know how successful we're going to be. It's almost, we're almost there, but there's so many big basics, no flow. Oh, I think I have a magic button here that I can, can do this with. <laughs> Sage, what's happening in your world today? How's Unreal Engine treating you? Oh, I see. That's what that does. Interesting. <laughs> Rakers. I think I'm not into a raker. Maybe watercolor. An opaque salt watercolor, perhaps? Salt alt, let's try that. Salt alt, the alt salt. Nope, that sometimes does that. So Logitech has this driver issue that I sometimes just have to switch off my mouse, switch it on again to be able to move, there we go, to move the character. Oh, that's salt, gotcha. Yeah, we, I don't think we're into salt. Salt course, fine. Spatter, asteroid, Pollock, Shah. What does what does Shah do? It's kind of the surprise brush. <laughs> we don't want to do that either. I think I might stick with what's this one? Dragon scales. Also sweet. Grass, foliage, fur, gulls, crazy cracks. But those are just the Photoshop brushes. So there's, of course, tons of others. Chalk, that's a... We, we tried charcoal. Don't think we had chalk before. Cement. What does cement do? How about dry mud? Dry mud good? A little soft. I mean, if we just add more flow to it, that might, that might just do it. I can also see that. With less flow. It's time I cleared my mask, huh? <laughs> Clear mask. And then I'll just go and add myself another paint layer into this. Still hunting for that perfect brush. <laughs> Cement is a nice blusher. Oh, I see. That's what well, I see. Fiber moss. <laughs> Not for this occasion. Fiber sparse. I tell you, sometimes the hunt for the correct, for the for the best brush is like literally like a lifelong, lifelong thing. Knife painting. Perhaps with, you know, with less with less opacity, less flow. I think I can see that, especially with... Um, I 
with less flow. That as a build-up, and then with uh, with more flow to get that jaggy edge, possibly. So the, just the jagginess of the edge isn't isn't uh, isn't that big a deal. I think the moment we make it we make it higher res here, that should probably become a little better and it does as well probably in 4k even more take substance paint a while we just we just trust it's gonna work do you know i don't know I, yeah there we go that's that's much that's much nicer on the outline but my performance is is no longer great so it's <laughs> I, I haven't found a way chris maybe you know that i know that you can make yourself a new brush that you can save out and you can then preface that with something that you can search for so that's the only way that chris and i currently know how to tag something it i don't know if there's a way to just like you know add a tag to this once it's named it's named kind of thing knife painting is cool knife painting heavy it's another one that we could try i'm gonna go put this back to to 1024 Yes, knife painting heavy. I think we found our found our brush. Then with with a little less um, little less stroke capacity, a little less flow. Vary this by size. I think that is the brush. I'm gonna try. Ha! Oh, good stuff. So knife painting heavy. I can also just go and remove that paint layer and just create another one. Same thing as clearing the mask, really. Oh, you're working on your dungeon. Okay. <laughs> dungeon in Unreal Engine or is it a dungeon in Das Studio? <laughs> okay, so thingy in the middle, three strokes above the eye. Let's see. I'll probably do that without the without the symmetry here. I like that you can kind of build this up and just make it uneven on the outside. I just remove that underneath the nose. Just kind of do that. And then to break that up, I can, I'm can. i going to try and put a, kind of a breakup mask in there. And then we have another one on the cheek here. And then there's something like a lighter... Uh, variation of the purple in here then. Ideal example for the editorial license. You can literally just call this like whatever Kaja war paint and then just say editorial license. Ha ha ha. I haven't quite found out actually, Chris, um, how to save out a brush. I've never looked into that, but it must be uh, possible if I go and um, if I have my brush properties here and I fiddle with them, I don't actually know how I would then save this brush. Create tool preset, that's probably it. Material preset, brush preset, there we go. I think that's maybe how that, how that would work. And if I've done anything, that's that's kind of cool. I might, I might go and try that here. So save it. Should I need to give that a name somewhere? <laughs> no, unless it's already in here. Oh, it's just called new brush preset. Dang. Should I have not named that like so? Ah, maybe that's how that works. So I'm just going to call it JV uh, heavy paint. 
or just J, J heavy paint, like so. Is that cool? And then if I go and search for J, the J heavy paint comes up. Ah ha ha! Is how we do? No, I like it. I like it. I like it. Let's go and make another fill layer then. This is going to be um, kind of underneath it. This is for the lighter purple. I'll pop that here. And give it... Is that a good shade of purple? It was more like more like this, wasn't it? And slightly kind of lighter. Let's leave it like this. This was actually supposed to be the dark purple. <laughs> and then this is the light purple. And then that will get a mask. And then that will get a paint layer. And then that had this kind of highlight there, this here, like so. Perfect, we're nearly done. I'm tempted to just put that in here, or maybe kind of underneath here as well. Somehow. But of course, that's now pretty perfect. So I want to go and break that up a little. Let's see if I can, if I can make that work not actually with anything special like a generator, but with something that Mr. 3D Megaverse has taught me this morning in a video. Buddy, it's like we've we've been hanging out all day. I've watched your video on the uh, on the workflow about how to get clothing from Marvelous Designer out of uh, Marvelous Designer and then put it into Substance Painter for texturing. That was that was quite nice. All these funky little tips that you've given there. Wonderful to see you. And I'm so glad you got into Elden Ring. <laughs> I totally did have fun and I still am having fun. Sometimes it's not just picking up a tip in like how you're supposed to do it. You then have to go and literally practice it. And this is what this session is all about for me. So let me see if I can do that. So if I go back to the dark purple here now, that's all the dark purple paint. I want to break that up a little bit so that it uh, appears more, um, you know, more just crackly with bits and pieces. So I was thinking I'm going to go and put maybe uh, something in here. I forgot what it was. It's something, it had something to do with a mask and I've already forgotten what to, how to do that. Or do I do that in the material now? That's where I do that, isn't it? Is it? Oh, I forgot now. <laughs> How did I do that now? Didn't you do that in the mask? You did something in here, didn't you? It wasn't a paint layer, it wasn't a generator. Was it a generator? Compare mask, filter, separation. It wasn't that, I think it was a generator. Or how did you do a generator? I thought so. I thought it was a generator. And then check it out. Inside the generator, you used a uh, to the dripping metal mask editor that's the one exactly the mask ed that was it wasn't it <gasps> mask editor indeed how exciting so i've never tried that before and that looks bizarre but that is only because that's the material let's have a look at the mask itself and see what it does so the amazing thing is that you can now go and play with all these values here i suppose you can make it blurry you can put all types of textures in that's really what i'd like to do i think first of all that is what i want exactly i want to make i want to set this all to zero and in texture i'm going to go and put something something like it doesn't even really matter something like a dirt type texture in it i'm sure we have something let's try something anything will grunge dirt Let's try that. Does anything happen? Nothing happens. Contrast, does anything happen? No. Dang. <laughs> it 
Turn off the curves, you got here. Okay, curvature, done that. Turn the texture up. Hazen. T texture? T texture, no. Contrast, no. Blur, blur, no. Was that a good idea even? Contrast, no. Invert, invert, no. Dang! <laughs> The texture of this one here. Scale, contrast, brightness, brightness, maybe. Texture, opacity. What a shame. I had kind of expected for something to show up. The slider then open it up and play with the settings in blend mode. Hmm. Do you know, let me just do this just from the from the top because uh, this is my this is my current mask perfect i like it that's what i've painted let me go and add the generator does that need to be above the paint or below the paint first of all we'll figure it out there's the mask builder legacy we don't want that we want the mask editor let's go try that on above okay cool that is the curvature. We don't really want to see that. So turn down curvature. Everything's black. Kind of what I'm what I'm expecting. Now in image input texture. That is where I'm going to pick something like a dirt mask. So this grunge thing here, for example. I'm kind of thinking that should show up, but it doesn't because texture opacity is set to zero. So nothing shows up, which kind of makes sense. But when I increase that, it should, shouldn't I, shouldn't it show that? Oh, above blend mode. Oh, above blend mode. Like, like here, you mean? This here? Is that it? I thought it was normal. Isn't it? Oh, here. No, that's just the... That's just that, isn't it? In the texture setting. Oh, in here, perhaps. Blending mode, not overlay, normal. Right. Oh, we have another blending mode here. Oh, I see, I see. John, this is priceless. This is the kind of stuff that's really difficult to figure out by yourself. Woohoo! <laughs> How cool is that? So then just to have a quick nosy at what the not metallic, what does my material look like as a result? Right, it looks like that. <laughs> Splodgy all over. <laughs> just from my understanding, what happens if I put that underneath it? Then it works on that. Put it above it, it works on everything. So ideally I'd like it to only affect my uh, my paint though. How fascinating. Would that mean I'd have to be able to kind of mask it off somehow or just make it interact with with this? How would that was that something that we could just do with something like multiply? Yes, of course, because that's how it works like in Photoshop, isn't it? Isn't it? Boom. Man, I once once you get it, you really see the amount of of options that you have. I'm so glad I caught that on tape. <laughs> so now I can go and play with the with the setting so that it just looks like a solid paint stroke, a little bit broken up. So we can do that. My God, how much fun is this? So invert is, does, does that quite clearly. That makes sense. The scale. Yes, like it. Alt click. Now that doesn't, doesn't do that. <laughs> I'll leave it on that for now. Contrast. Make it more contrasty, make it less contrasty. That makes also perfect sense. Same with the brightness. Yes, I like it, I like it. Let's leave all that on its on the default. Texture two, so I could have a second texture. Fantastic! <laughs> it's like this whole learning by doing. I think this is why I love all of us coming together, because the amount of tips that we can casually pick up from one another, that is just so cool. 
those here on the bottom, those are the maps that um, Substance Painters baked. Parameters. What's, what's parameters do? Does that do anything? Some balance. So I'm thinking maybe it's the scale that I want to that I want to make a little bit smaller so that we see kind of cracks and then also that's the other thing here so in in this mode here I can go and blend this in and out so if I wanted a little less of that I should do something like this also sweet sweet ass Websoul thank you so much for your subscription buddy I appreciate that that is really cool it encourages me to do more on Twitch. So sometimes uh, I don't have so much time for Twitch. Man, this is awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much. I mean, what other blending modes bring things to the party? I mean, multiply is cool. Div is divide something we should be looking into? There's so many. It doesn't do live preview, does it? No, you have to kind of <laughs> you have to kind of click it and see what what happens here. Subtract also not not bad, I gotta say. I mean the overlay was that. That's also not bad, I have to say. I mean Because then once that's done, you can also go into the actual material here and then just go and make that a tiny bit. That's also something you can change, of course. Add a mu well, not, not a multiply here, but, but do something like a... Try that with... Oh, that, try that with overlay. Look at that. New colors to be discovered. And that can sometimes change the... Change the... Um, change your colors quite drastically, but it's possible to do that here. My God. Inverse divide. My goodness, look at that. It makes it pop. <laughs> and just like in Photoshop, if you like something, you just go, yeah, that. I'll just make a duplicate of my layer and just add that on top of that. So add that to the normal. If normal is nice, but you like something else better. Make a copy in this one here. Make that. What was what was the other one? Like make it like uh, like soft light. Add that to that. Hours of fun. I might not do it because it's it looks a bit pants. Let's go take that away. Hmm. Sweet. So that's certainly broken up the the paint a bit then there's also of course that's just a preview so once we bring that into dash studio we can just blend it in as much or as little as we want add in the ao in the mask editor Ooh, come on come on let's do that mask editor um i'm going back add in the ao in the mask editor okay listen to the man how does that work ao in the mask editor that's one of the maps it's baked hasn't it this one here as a second um, texture, you mean? Or how would we do that? Isn't that amazing? I, I feel the same way, WebSoul. Absolutely. There's a slider in the mask editor. Come on, buddy. Where you at? In the mask editor. There's a slider. There's so many sliders. Could it be under parameters? I like narrowing these things down that I can. So it's not here by the actual mask, is it? Invert balance contrast could be attributes then. Let's have a look at attributes. It's not attributes. Image inputs, parameters then, maybe. Doesn't have that attributes is here twice. That's not confusing, is it? Thanks, Adobe. <laughs> Ambient occlusion. Have you, do, you, do you see that? Ambient occlusion, this one here. Mm, no, but that is, we, we should be seeing something, right? I'm thinking. 
Is it because actually we, so texture one and two, those are two different things, right? This is an overall thing, I would imagine. Should I turn this down a little? See if ambient occlusion does something. I don't see it. Open the options above, like under texture here. Or the options like you mean here. No, those are those are different things, aren't they? Some attributes here. But they're just like a description of what that is. If it's underneath texture two, if this is the slider we're talking about. I can't see him making a difference. The options above, oh, here. Inside ambient occlusion, aha, oh, ha. perfect. All right, cool. I think, I think I'm with you now. I think I'm with you now. So there's the opacity, there's a bit of contrast. Can we, can we look at that map directly? We can, can't we? Just to see what it actually looks like. The ambient occlusion map, that is what it looks like. Yes, I like it. So we should see some subtle changes around the eyes here then. Just so what we're, that we know what, we're, what we need to actually look at. Blending mode multiply good. Or should we change that to something like normal? I can see a little bit of stuff happening there. I'm kind of expecting additional changes to happen here. I think maybe multiply was a, was a good idea. Increase the contrast, make that come out. Do we see anything? I ain't seeing nothing. To mask view. Well, I see how the mask actually changes. Good point, yes. So and then we go from multiply to uh, maybe maybe we'll try normal see what happens so when I change contrast I'm expecting something to happen it seems to do something <laughs> but not all that much it's food for thought though it's food for thought I like the idea that there's so many options and this mask editor thing I think that's that's just dynamite stuff let me see if I can replicate this same effect on my on my other paint layer here now. Let me try that, let me try that. I'm gonna stay in mask mode. I'm gonna go and try to copy these effects here and put that right on to here. Let's see, that's this one here now. That is now unbroken up in here. I think I'm also gonna go and put a generator in. Let me try that. Does it, is it enough to just paste the effects in here? Like so, or do I have to, no, that doesn't work. I'm gonna to have to, yes, it works, it works, it works. Look at that, it works, oh my God. It works out the box. That's very cool. Would it have worked? These are the other things that I'm kind of thinking about. Would it have worked taking a mass generator out of here, saying copy, and then in here, if I hadn't had a generator at all, had it worked if I just put that in the mask? Can I just paste that in here? Would that have worked? It does. So it does do the whole thing. It would, look at that. Seriously, cool. That is cool. Invert, that is something else we can try. I'll, I'll just try it on here. Ambient inclusion, open up, invert, invert. Here we probably don't have that many details. Let me go back to this one here. Just because the map around the eyes looks, uh, looks better. Ambient occlusion. Super easy to get lost in 5,000 parameters. Eh. Not much of a difference. I'm abandoning the AO experiment for now. <laughs> see if I can get, see if I can get these things exported here. Is that actually, does that look good now? <laughs> Not quite. I think we could do something else um, with this that makes it more, look more like this. So it looks like there's some more, um, some more uh, breakup that we can apply there, but I'm not entirely sure how to go about that 
so that there's a little bit of extra, you know, just breakup happening. Currently, that's just a flat stroke. We certainly have done that to the edges. I feel like we should be able to do something else. But I also don't exactly know how to go about doing that. <laughs> On the main layer, add a generator. So on the, like here, on the material layer, you mean? Oh man, yes, of course, that makes sense. It's super easy to get confused. This is what's happening on the mask or inside and with the mask. And this is what's happening with the material. Cool. And so now we can essentially do um, similar things, right? Yes, 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 yes. We could even, should we should what 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 type of generator are we are we thinking of using then could use the the regular mask generator again and see what we can play up with that and height and rough indeed yes absolutely that that that's a good idea too the so mask editor is kind of the the one magic magic thing doesn't it that does it all okay dude we don't probably don't want you on the opacity or emissive probably also don't want you on metal <laughs> and on normal let's just let's just have a look at color for now and see what we can what we can do here that's the curvature again isn't it so curvature we want to set that to zero have a look at the mask mask indeed With that, is this multiply an option here? Turn it down a tad. It's intensity. We see nothing. Why not? Oh, because the mask is a mask, isn't it? Duh. It's not going to change anything. Its its effect is going to be probably visible on the material as I do something like that. Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. Man, it is really difficult for me to to understand all these things. Let me go back to mask and see if we can make that just, you know, different than it was before. <laughs> In this case, it isn't a mask. Oh man. You use a fill layer instead, not the mask. In this case, it isn't a mask. Should I be doing, should I be, should I have another material underneath it so that there's variation in between? That's kind of how we deal with this in Photoshop, isn't it? That we have essentially this um, again on the bottom here. And that mask would be in between if I go and take that mask away. And this is then like a slight variation of the of, uh, of the other thing that like could be like maybe just darker or something. That's right, isn't it? It's not necessary. Okay, I'll go remove that then. <laughs> So you're saying remove the generator, check, and add a fill underneath it, you mean? Underneath or above it? Underneath it? Gotcha. And in that fill layer, I do... This is hard work, actually. This is much less fun than I had expected. <laughs> That's not what you meant. No worries. I'll go and go back to this. <laughs> Base color now looks a little bit terrible. I'm not entirely sure what happened then. Actually, it's just my base properties that look a little, look a little terrifying. Base, oh, it's base color. I'm not looking at the material. That's why. Gotcha. On the layer, on my material layer here, right click and add a fill. Oh, I see, I see, that's what you mean. So like, I, would, I do it this way here, add a fill layer in here like this, right? Gotcha. <laughs> like a Kit Kat, I like it. How does, where is, when is this, how does this go away? I've accidentally right clicked something and now this is 
I don't know what that, why that window is here. Uh, it's also not movable either. Is this substance freaking out now? I think it might be. Yeah, that's now that's now here forever. I don't think I can move that anymore. I might just go and, and restart Substance Painter. Actually, let me go and save this and just go and restart it. And that's a suspect here. Suspect! I can add a texture into the roughness for example. Then, then we have that flaky thing. That is probably what I'm looking for. I like it, I like it. Let me just go restart it. I don't know what this panel thing is here. That is what I'm totally gonna try to do. That is a great idea. It's with these 3D apps, I think there's always this little, um, this, this fine line between it becoming a total headache and something that is off-putting when there's too much to learn. And then there's also the fun side. And I think it's really important to, uh, to not forget that. It's, it's really important to make sure you still have fun with these things. So I, in the, especially in the past, I often, uh, I often uh, found all these interfaces and these millions of parameters so overwhelming i gotta say i'm much better these days but i'm still it, it to a certain extent it does it does turn me off as well <laughs> when you think hey i want to do something creative and what you're doing is not something creative so it's kind of a it's, that's that's not good it's like when you play a video game and you're thinking well i'm playing this because i want to have a good time and then really the interface frustrates you or you know the gameplay frustrates you and you think that's never good aha thing has gone away i like okay let's try this with the let's try this in the roughness channel here let me go and see um there's also opacity that we could that we could tackle that with right if i put a map in here then we have uh, bits of pieces broken off here that and um and roughness i'm 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 game i'm game let's try like a like a dirt just regular dirt grunge dirt perhaps It's kind of not really what I had in mind, <laughs> but whoops, maybe that was not a good idea. Forget opacity. Let's try height instead. Not height, uh, roughness. So roughness something map. Anything like this here, maybe? Certainly getting there. Wasn't there a way on the mask where I could set the kind of the size of this appropriately. Oh, random. Oh, that's nice. And this, I guess, does the seat. Oh, not, not so bad, I gotta say. Like Elden Ring, I mean, exactly, yes. <laughs> that is exactly what I mean. Hey, not bad. We have variation already. That's cool. Roughness variation. I like it. Oh, it's not in this opacity. It's in the mesh opacity. Up in the... in. Right, yes, good point. Good point. Here you make it bigger and smaller. Yeah, that's... Uh, Gotcha. 
Yeah, do you know of a shortcut that sets us back to like the default value? Like in, in Das Studio, we have this that we can alt click a slider that would set this back to one. Is there something like that in uh, Substance Painter as well? I already know about the shift that's like in Blender. So left click and drag. If it's too fast, I believe you can shift left click and drag and then the adjustment happens a bit slower. That's cool, but maybe like a like a default thing, that'd be cool. No, same here. I keep instinctively doing um, alt left click, but of course that doesn't quite work. One's good, we're, we're leaving with one, we're leaving with one. So um, that is the roughness. If we do the same for the height channel, we just go and put, can we copy this out here? No, we can just go and put something else into the high channel. See if that does any kind of, you know, uh, flakings, but that might be nice. Let's try that. Yes, 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 indeed. Just, um, just obviously much less, you know. It would be awesome if I could change this independently from the roughness, which of course I can by adding a separate fill layer, right? That's how we do that. We just go take height out of the equation. We go and add another fill layer in here. Is that how we do that? F -f 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 fill layer. So and then to for my information, and this one is roughness. And then this one here is gonna be height. Is that how we handle that? It is, isn't it? Oh my God, this is so cool. So height then, same idea, some kind of dirt, whatever, like, like this one here, the one that didn't quite work out where I'm thinking, well, that now. And invert also, maybe. That looks better on a... For a crayon thing. I think I suppose we can doodle with the contrast, maybe do, do other balance things. There's noise parameters here. Let's check those out. Scale. Does that do? Disorder? Does it, oh, it's calculating stuff. Got you. <laughs> Sorry, Substance Painter. I'm totally getting you confused here. Or maybe it's just not the right texture. I suppose that's that's to be to be totally tested out. Dirt four doesn't work. Let's see if there's another dirt texture. The yeah, hours of fun, I tell you. Hours of fun. <laughs> you could probably even have one that goes, you could have two of those, couldn't you? You could have one that goes like that and one that goes like that to follow the strokes. And then last not least, exactly, if you're kind of happy, then we just go and turn down the um, this whole effect uh, inside the layer. Is that how that works? Turn out how that works. Dang! <laughs> what a shame. Where's that, you think? Layer strength to tone it down? Thought that would have been this here. Maybe I was impatient. You'd think it should go down. This is the same as making it invisible, isn't it? Yet, we observe it isn't so. Why? Oh, yes. Ah, I fall for that every time. I fall for that every time. Yes. Good point. So like this is, what did we say? This is the height, isn't it? <laughs> yes. 
Yes, 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 yes. Chris taught me that tip. Absolutely. Super easy mistake to make. <laughs> Super easy mistake to make. Now we've broken up bits and pieces here. Is this the correct going the right way or should this be inverted? Yeah, like that, isn't it? Much better. Ha! <laughs> We must do the same thing on the other layer. Oh, do you know, this is another question I was going to ask you. Do you had, so this is kind of vague understanding there. Um, do you, we'll talk about export settings in a moment, but there is a thing that I picked up from one of your tutorials in which you can, I think you had to put a filter into something that turns height into normal information. So I suppose now if I were to just export it, would I just have height information or would I be able, would I need to, on the export settings, would I need to tell uh, Substance Painter to, uh, to essentially go and say, make a, use a normal map. Like this, these are my, that's not my thing here that I'm on, I think I'm on this will be on this at one point. Oh, I'll call it here, uh, face paint. So like here in normal, do I have to change something here where it gets this information from? Because I don't necessarily want a height map or how does that work? Or translates it into normal information already. That's that's good to know. That's good to know. Well, let's see how it comes out. Let me just go and apply uh, something similar here to my lighter purple. Oops. And then we'll see what that looks like when we export it, and we'll see if we can get the uh, get all that information across. That would be really cool. Let's see. So on on this layer then here. So let me see if I can remember this. So we go and put a fill layer onto the material now. <laughs> How exciting is that? Fill layer onto here. And into that fill layer, we're gonna go and... Um, we can actually try and copy the things that we had at the top there, just for my understanding, just so that I remember what this is like. We're gonna have one for the roughness and we have one for the height. on a per material basis here under roughness we want to go and put something in here maybe that It doesn't do all that much, which is okay. I'll do that again, just because I can. Filet, this one's for the height. So I have independent jiggy pokery options here. And did we say we've got some, maybe something else? Put that here. I think this is what I used at the top there. Let me try something different then. Maybe this here. Yes, I like. <laughs> I like it. I like it. And then to get the effect of that reduced, we're going to check, change this from base color, which now changes the base values for all these things. We'll go change that to height. And then with that, I'm going to turn that down just in here. Man, is this cool or what? That's insane. I'm seriously chuffed about this. This is just so cool. <laughs> I'm actually inclined to put something uh, darker in these areas and not necessarily with the purple just with the 
with a single color. Let me just quickly do that. So that's another, um, another, there's another fill layer. And that'll be just underneath this stack here. It's so cool, isn't it? <laughs> he does, yes, he does. So mouth, I'm not sure if we're gonna if we're gonna see that. I might just remove that on the on the mask. I'm just gonna make these these areas a little darker. Or like let's say uh, let's say this is kind of black ink effect. Yes, good point. Let's go take care of that <laughs> because we can. The black mask in here. We also need to have a uh, just a color. A dark gray will do fine. It's just more like a uh, more like a shadow thing. Like um, like literally down here. That is that is all I mean. And it might not even have to be all that much. Yeah, just something like that. There. I just think it might look a little better. So he has paint in his mouth. Let's go take care of that. So this is this mask then here, dark purple. And I think I can just go and uh, paint with that. If you really wanted to, you can hide parts of the mesh with Substance Painter now as well. That wasn't a, that's something also fairly new that I've learned. Might just switch the um, symmetry off here for that. Well, thankfully, we can probably just about do that here. There, well spotted, well spotted. Nose, that's on the light purple layer. <laughs> There's so much to learn in Substance Painter, Sage. It's crazy stuff. But it is also, it just really opens up your eyes at like stuff that you that you'd think, well, clearly this is geometry, right? This is what we have to, um, what we have to go and brute force in as geometry. The stuff you don't have to do because Substance Painter can take care of that with the, um, with with maps. Absolutely wonderful, absolutely wonderful. So I think that's why it's such an important tool to get acquainted with. I'm looking forward to exploring these these things we discussed on Saturday uh, in regards to uh, maybe making clothing tears and and stuff like that embellishment for for clothing just with maps. I mean, what a cool idea, right? <laughs> what a cool idea. I mean, look at the look at all the the, the breakup detail. That's that's unbelievable. It's almost like it could have a bit more strokey stuff on on this side here. Yeah, I think I have a have my a funky brush here. J heavy paint. <laughs> Quite phenomenal. Quite phenomenal. Okay, export time. Let's see what this looks like in um, in Das Studio. Let me go and save this and export the maps. We'll see what comes out. I'm really excited about this. The poor cat. <laughs> the poor cat. Websol, thank you so much. I'm gonna go and collate these, like all these little designs here. If I just um, battle my way through all these suggestions, I'm gonna go and collect them and you will be able to download them later. I don't think it's strong enough for a real product that I could release, but hey, it's super cool. Fun of our efforts. Oh, so export then. 
I've saved this arc. I'm going to go to export textures. Output template and I'll say here my... See, it's gone now, isn't it? Didn't I just have one? PBR, PBR Metallic Roughness J? Didn't I make myself one? And it's gone now. I don't really understand how that can happen. <laughs> In all honesty, let me do it again. Duplicate. Why would it do that? Oh, I called it face paint, didn't I? I didn't call it J, so sorry. <laughs> it wasn't J, I was looking for that. Face paint, that's the one. So I'm gonna use this one here. So I don't need emissive, I'll get rid of that. Height, don't know yet. Normal, I think I do. Metallic, we're not using, so I'm gonna get rid of that. Roughness and base, that's cool. And I also need that opacity map, so I'll go and make myself that opacity channel and I'll pick that from here, put that in here and I'll take that from the great channel, I think. And you need to change the normal format. That's, that is interesting. I think I saw you mention that. Does that have something to do? Let me see if I can remember normal from here, right? Normal OpenGL, that left click and drag that into here. Is that how I do that? Because we're currently using DirectX. We don't want that. I think we want to do this. I think that's how it works, isn't it? That and we say, I do we, is that how we do that? And now we're taking from OpenGL. That was it, right? From, op from RGB, I think so. The stuff you have to know. Thank you. Really appreciate this. <laughs> and and I'll put directory. That's all from a previous thing. I'm gonna go and delete all of that. Just default directory, leave that in here. I might just go and export it and we'll just see what comes out. Metallic roughness. Search option would be seriously awesome here. But we don't have it, do we? <laughs> Face paint, that's the one. In 4K. I'll leave it on infinite for now. I might also just get rid of the name it has here. I'm just gonna take that off just so that it says just normal without the without the name. I'm okay with the Udem tile. I, I like that information. Well, there, there we go. You want the alpha channel from the base color. Um, from the base color? Really? Not from the opacity? Are you sure? Because this worked quite well for me in the past. Like opacity and then just go from the gray channel. Just for just for argument's sake, let's make, let's make another one. Let's call it opacity from uh, base. Just because I'm curious to see the difference. So base color, left click and drag over here. And you say that from the gray channel then? From, no, from the A channel, from the alpha channel. Oh, opacity isn't what I think it is. Oh, that's a shame, isn't it? <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah, let's have both. I mean, you know, it's not like we're we're poor people here. We have we have the luxury of millions of maps. Is that actually something that um, just before I bake this, that that is something I should have, uh, like on my uh, previously, like on the stream on Saturday. What I did was I uh, I added myself the opacity um, values here, here and there. So I'm basically using the opacity channel. Um, for that and uh, that's kind of a little hack way of getting around that oops i'm just going to group these together here and call it purple and so what i uh, did then was uh, essentially on the base properties I then turn my opacity down and then this is what I'm uh, what I'm left with on on export so this now has a proper uh, opacity channel 
good point. So if I were not doing this, let me just do this and let me just go bring this back as if I didn't have an opacity channel. You say I, sh I could still uh, get this out without the, the opacity hack. That is, that's really cool to know. Let's, let's check it out. Let's check it out. We have uh, that. We have, we've got two. So I'll say opacity, um, like, um, for, I'll just call it the opacity on opacity from base. I like it. And let's go and export that. Export it all. Uh, and then, of course, here I'm going to have to ch pick that. Let's do it. Oh, I'd but turn off the base layer. Okay, cool. So, right, no, no need to restrict ourselves. That's right. So I'll just do it with all the skin visible and I want to see if, because that would be a much better way to, to export these things without the, what I'd like to call the hack. Right, so yeah, here we have the, we've got the skin um, visible, so I probably need to switch that off. And with the opacity from, from base and this, are the, this is the roughness and this is the other, so currently we don't have any opacity here on, on either of these channels. No worries. Let's go and do that again. Does it not? I have to go and do this here. So it looks like I'm going to have to go and turn this down. Hello? Uh, hello? <laughs> opacity. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, I think I have to do this. I just go do it again. <laughs> Let it do its magic, huh? <laughs> I can't believe where the time goes with 3D. I feel like there's a real time vacuum when you undertake epic mountains like that. There's a real, it's a real time vacuum, <laughs> I find. And now we have proper transparency here. That's nice. And most of which we don't need, but that's, that's all cool. We have normal maps though. We have also got height maps. So we have height and normal. Yeah, you're right. So this is all the detail that we have created with the face paint. It's also got his eyes on there. So it's not just our material in the normal map. I don't know if that makes a makes a difference. It's, yeah, so that's that's an interesting one here. I don't know if that's that's good yet or not. I'm just you know I'm just saying that is what we have. We got this looking interesting. And then we have the regular height information as well. And our opacity. So opacity from, from base appears to be white, but the the opacity map um, that I made from the actual alpha channel seems to be the one that we want. Oh my. <laughs> Would the height be of influence if you put it in a different on a different figure? I think so, yes, I think so. If we set it up as a geo shell, let's go do this. Like, um, I can probably just go and load him in my. Let me go load him in again. And then I'll go and apply the geo shell that we've made on the weekend. So it's, it's, uh, it's a cool concept, the whole GeoShell thing. I shrunk down the mesh offset a little bit so that it's closer to the figure, so that there's no offset visible. And uh, I've pre-populated the previous one, but that is only the base color and the opacity map. And I put the opacity map also in the... 
I think the height channel so that we have some some variation there but <laughs> yes skincare music while we're doing face painting that's exactly right <laughs> I thought I'd pick that I thought I'd pick that I see how it goes <laughs> Shazam exactly so here we have this one here face paint one geo shell I'll just use that as a template because we haven't painted or anything else. So in iRay, it's going to look um, a bit stronger than it does here. And I think also I did, I made him unselectable and made the geo shell selectable. So that's nice if you wanted to go and if you had multiple um, surfaces and you want to use your surface selection tool to, uh, to select those parts now you're selecting the geo shell by default the geo shell is unselectable and the person is selectable so not quite what we want we want we want to select this so just on the face and just on the diffuse let me go actually and copy the maps we're going to use into different directory actually i'll do that in a second i'll go i'll just use i'll just drag them in from here see if they work in principle so base color goes into this base color here yes the cutout opacity is not quite correct that's this goes into here i've put it down a little bit so it's not on one it's on 0.7 just so that it blends in with the skin a little bit and then i think under bump yeah there we go i've also put the transparency in the in the bump now but let me go and put that to, in fact to none and let me just use the normals because that's really interesting i want to see what the normals bring to the party on one and that so far let's see shall we <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have some that that are that are just a bit of chill in the background. You can get some. I think Pretzel do some good ones as well. I'm thinking of going with them. There is one. Uh, I'm with Epidemic myself. I can send you a link later. I think it's actually on my on my website. There's some there's some links that give me a little affiliate commission. It's on wpguru.co.uk forward slash affiliate hyphen links. There's like Daz and Renderosity, Blender Market, some cloud rendering services, some Corel stuff, eBay, of course. And then at the bottom here, Epidemic. This gives me a little uh, commission and I think it might give you a little um, discount here as well. They're quite nice. So you can use their music for Twitch as well as YouTube. And Pretzel are similar. They're called Pretzel.rocks. I think you can use them for free on Twitch, but you have to pay when you go to uh, when you go to YouTube. So that's so that you don't get hit by copyright um, strikes. But yeah, that's that's kind of nice. These are the guys that I use and I've got my own playlists here that I play from time to time. But every once in a while, you can also go into browse and then into genres and they have all kinds of stuff that I think I've I went was it under discovery? <laughs> And I think I went into fashion and beauty, and that seems to have that kind of that kind of genre that we're currently listening to in there. <laughs> Indeed, um, yes, John is right. It, it, they do different things. Uh, you can use them in combination with one another as well. So I'm currently not using a height map. So the height map would go into the bump channel here you can also use it in the geometry uh, channel here under under displacement so that's another way to use that map and uh, the difference is that the uh, that both the normals and the bumps will change these types of details that you see when you kind of look at the figure so we definitely see that here we definitely see the normals having an effect and it works beautifully man it works great so this is just caused by the normals. So you could um, also use the, we can do the height map on top of that. And if we use the height inside the displacement channel, that, you know, that has some, some weird effects sometimes, but it does change the geometry. I think this here is a rendering trick, whereas the displacement is actually changing the geometry. So we'll, we can look at both these things. 
let me have a look at the let me add the the um the height map to the bump see what that looks like <laughs> oop not that it's this and that isn't it like that height there we go see what the difference is there so I can leave the normal map in here and just turn it to zero then the normal map is not having an effect yeah but we can see that the that the bump now does something as well maybe this high the strength isn't quite enough let me put that to 20 and there there we go this is this is the this is the height stuff that we saw here but it's a different effect than what we saw with the normal so let me add the normals to that crazy cool isn't it and now technically we have both these effects overlaid. Is that cool or what? Is that just so cool? Switch the bump off. Let me just go and put a little bit more light on here. Light on it. Oops. No normals, flat as a pancake, with bump. Very cool. See some, see some bits and pieces here. Very exciting. Oh, that's bump of uh, one that has barely an effect. Let me just put that to ten here, maybe, and then put the normals to one. Sweet, huh? Indeed, yes. There's no value guessing. I I do like the idea that we can that we can just put uh, that we can tone down the effect as well. So if we just stick with the normal, say, let me just go and turn the turn the bump off. Bump is very hit and miss. I mean, bump is good if you already have a black and white map and you want to cheat with that. Like what I showed on the Saturday web saw is that I didn't bake a height map out. I just used the opacity map and put it put it into the bump channel and then played with the values and that looked really nice. So if you don't have a bump map, if you don't have the luxury of being able to bake one or whatnot, you can just you know misappropriate uh, black and white maps and and put them in the bump channel, see what happens. But then if we wanted to make that make that stronger, we could probably do that, right? If we go and make that. Does that work? Yeah, it doesn't it's it doesn't work great. <laughs> so yeah, normal maps are usually meant to be used as is. I mean you can turn it down, I suppose, the effect. It doesn't actually get turned down that much. <laughs> So 1 and 0.5 look the same. But um, let me show you, if I just switch this off here, I'll switch both the bump and the uh, and the normals off. Let me show you what were to happen if we put this into, under geometry, if we put this into the displacement channel. So I'll use the, the same height map in displacement. So that has a very different effect because it'll also be visible on the outside of the geometry so anything uh, bump and normal will that that happens kind of at render time just to the image with the technically with an image trick but if you use displacement often maybe you have to crank that up a bit also minimum displacement and maximum displacement you can set that to let's say Then you see something like this, which is not good on our face paint here, but it changes the geometry on the side of the object here. And you can go and crank up the um, subdivision level as well. Then you have, then then you let the render engine um, add more detail into your thing. So this, some clothing creators use that with uh, with bump maps that then in the texture shader on filament the clothing looks flat but when you render it they have really puffy sleeves or there's like a real pattern that comes out and that's usually done with the displacement strength so that, that so the difference is that this actually changes the geometry and then renders it but the um, bump and normal they don't do that they just use a render trick i think so obviously not what we're looking for let's not use the displacement here i'll go and take that out put all this back to to defaults what 
Well, since we have both maps, are we going to do both maps here, maybe? Maybe with 10 and 1, and then also just blend in the the paint under um, cutout. So this here would be with full strength. But if I want the skin to shine through a little bit, maybe 0 0.6 or 0 0.8, 0 0.7, something like that. That'll let the the underlying material get through. I think 0 0.7 was a good was a good compromise. Or 0 0.8. Yeah, maybe 0 0.8. I like extreme detail. That is just that kind of effect that I saw in the game. I really appreciate that. Like this. This is kind of, this is that sort of effect. I like it. I like it. The roughness. Did I put there? No, no, no. My goodness. We forgot the roughness. Thank you for reminding me. That is under base glossy. And then was it not reflection? It was ref it was reflection, wasn't it? Glossy roughness here. There it is. Let's put that in. Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> Height, opacity, roughness. Rough. And we can probably just put that to one. Glossy roughness. And we can see some. So this was... These are now the variations that we added in there. Ha! Oh, I like it. Indeed, yeah, no need for both. If you have it, so often it's easier to generate a, a kind of a black and white map from something or misappropriate a black and white map and use it as a bump map. Uh, then making a normal map is a little bit more difficult. So it looks, it, it has this particular look to it here. Um, like, you know, this, this has a lot of detail in here. Um, this is his this i think his teeth here <laughs> so it has uh, it's it's technically a data map if you will so this tells the render engine uh where a normal is pointing that's, that's why they're called normal maps so uh, the normal is the is the direction of uh of a polygon and depending on where in 3d space it points that is basically what this map records and it's called a data map because the if you if you imagine this is a face and it could it could be rotated anywhere in in the 3d world imagine there's a little stick that's pointing out the stick essentially is the imagine that's kind of the 3d manipulator for that one face and depending on which way it's rotated in red green uh, in in sorry in x y and z space that's data is recorded as a red green and blue value and that's why they look weird like this and so for the render engine it understands um if it shines light at a face like that which way the normal is pointing and then it knows which way to reflect the light from and which way to calculate it that's that's basically what a normal map does but the calculation to make that happen is, is relatively um complex so that's why not every every program can do that. Photoshop can do that. It has a way to uh, to kind of to kind of fake it, but to really be able to render this type of map, you need to have a 3D object and properties on it and something like Substance Meter that can really calculate it. So there's a way to convert them as well. You, you're very welcome, of course. There is a program that can convert height maps to bump maps and vice versa. So there is there is that, but it's always only going to be an appro approximation But because without the 3D object, a bump map wouldn't really be able to translate well into a normal map. You can kind of fake it and, and that's how things like Photoshop do it. And I, what's this program called? Brian told me that, um, what's it called? 
It has a really janky interface. It's made with Unity, but it's not really a 3D program. What is it called again? I've used it once or twice. I've forgotten what it's called now, but there is a program that can do it for free. Uh, God, I forgot what that's called now. But yeah, you can do it, but without the 3D object, it's, it's it, impossible to get this type of level of detail. Hey, let me go and save this out. And I think we have time to just make another design like this. So first of all, I should grab the relevant maps out of my out of my folder here and uh, put it basically secure them. I see this face painting stream. We have maps. One is is the one with the the green and white. I'm going to call it maps purple just for now. I'm going to probably rejig that later for it to become a distributable thing and change the names as well. So we have here the base and we have the height and we have the normal and then we have our opacity and then we have the roughness map. So copy and paste those into here. Haha! -ha. I love it. <laughs> Um, well, yes, I mean, the good thing, this is kind of part of the GeoShell uh, magic. Let me go and put my secured maps on this guy now. Just so that I can show you the um, kind of the magic of, of why we're doing this with, with GeoShells here. I'm just going to go and put that color map on here. And then under... A glossy roughness that's going to be the roughness map so this is not going to change any values that's just going to change the location of the map so that i'm kind of ready to export the other ones elsewhere bump map maps rather um la arch icons yes so normal goes in here and then Bump, not that we need them really. Uh, and then opacity. Like that. So, same thing. If we go, I've, I'm going to um, select my Necromancer now. And I'll go and save this here as a wearable preset. And I'll call that one. Um, purple face paint, maybe. Face paint purple. How about that? Face, face paint purple. And I don't want to use the eyelashes or the tear duct, just the geo shell here. And that saves that out. Perfect. So if I had a different character now, and I don't think I have another 8.1 male character here. I do have the base character and I also have an 8.0 character we can try out. Like, you know, the hippo. <laughs> Let's try Lee. Oh no, actually I do. The stylized 2021 character. That's a Genesis 8.1 character. Let me do... Let me see which one the 8.1 version is. This is the 8.1 version. Okay, let me try him. And so the cool thing is that you can go, um, you can apply the geo shell now directly onto another character, which is super cool. So different character, <laughs> muscly guy. And I can just apply that geo shell to this guy. And he now also has that face paint. So that's the beauty of, of using that, uh, that geo shell, the way we've set it up. Awesome. I don't know if the female can wear a male geo shell. We could try it out. It's, there's a product available that's called UV Swap. That'll certainly make that possible. Do you know the lips actually, we've forgotten to copy the material uh, onto the lips. Good point, actually. Materialize, was that it? It could be. It could be, Chris. I don't quite remember. Yes, the lips. I've forgotten the lips here. I'll go and, and fix that for the 
for the distributable thing. So face, copy, and then use it on the lips. Boom, lips look better now. And then ears technically as well, that's uh, that's the same map as well. We don't we haven't done anything on the on the back here. I think could have been materialized. It could have been materialized. Does that have a really janky interface, Chris? Then then that was it. <laughs> the lips, the lips. Right, you know, awesome. This is this is the kind of stuff we need because I'm facing that problem all the time. <laughs> hey, good. Let me go and have a crack at another face paint. Let's do that. Let's do that. I think we've got that. We've got the purple. That one is a bit. That was a bit much, maybe. <laughs> but you know, also possible. That one might be nice too. These look better on a uh, on a, on a character with darker skin. We could actually try that. Let's let's go and use a completely different character. I'm I'm up for doing this for another hour or so. I have enough coffee. <laughs> let's do that. Let's do that. Maybe that's good to show the whole process one more time and also kind of um, it just cements it in my brain yes i think recently i've prepared a jinx character that we can use and she has if i can find out where that is does she have i just need to find the the map i'm sure i have it somewhere but where that was Have I deleted it? I may have deleted it. No, I don't think I have deleted it. It's this one here. Under here there is Jinx Bikini Body, that's the one. I think I can just go and that is a material preset if I remember correctly. Let's see, let me find um, Jinx Jones and see if I can go and and uh, and do the whole thing again. Let me see if that works. Oh, awesome, WebSoul, that is really, really cool to know. Awesome. <laughs> that moment when you got your doors opening correctly. <laughs> That is cool. Can you can you post that link in the chat or is that disallowed? I don't remember if you can post links here on Twitch or not. I don't remember if I've set it up or not. If not, since you're a subscriber, thank you so much for that, by the way. You do get access to my Discord server, so um, uh, hop on and just post it there. That is cool. I run a private Discord server for supporters only. And uh, that is where we have kind of off stream chats and all that works really well so if you if you are on discord go jump on i'm gonna go add my base directory here that is that is somewhere here that's the one add that and then in here in dash scenes we have jinx bikini body if i do if i load that then she's got a spray painted bikini and then twitch doesn't complain there we go awesome it works yeah i think on youtube i disabled it because of scam attackers well, this is great or maybe because you're a subscriber it works this is awesome this is all we need to know it works thank you so much i will check it out web thank you much appreciated nevertheless do jump on the discord <laughs> and I think there is a 
there's an integration actually you don't get a link you have if you have your twitch account associated with your discord account i think you get automatic access to my discord server and you also got a little icon twitch icon it's good stuff oh so that was a okay got gotcha. you this was a full figure i thought it was just a material preset so this um is nice for uh, for texture painting because she has a slightly darker complexion. So let me go and see if I can remember the, the whole process here then. I'll use the UV pose here, UV prep pose, and that'll, that'll open her mouth, close her eyes, and it spreads her fingers as well so that we can paint in all these things. I think there's also a navel thing that's happening. Okay, she has, she's the HD version, so she has the eyelashes and the tear duct. I'm gonna go and export her out with, with her maps. I'll call her Jinx with Matt. That is all derived from this with filters here and this with collect. That's a HD version with the materials. Now let's go and head over to base to sorry parameters and under general mesh resolution let's set her to base she's already base so that means she wasn't hd then haha <laughs> let's go do that again she needs to be hd or i'd like for her to be hd export her again jinx with mats same thing so hd first then substance painter can go big from that then we go and put her to base resolution now we go to Edit, Object, Geometry, Triangulate. Now I'll go export her again. Jinx, no mats. Whoops. <laughs> Do you know, tomorrow uh, in the afternoon or in the evening, Brian might be doing a stream on his channel, which would be super exciting. He wants to check out how to use... Oh, he's been playing a lot with... And I'll switch this off here, no surfaces. He's been playing around a lot with Mid-Journey and I'd love to see that in action. Very cool stuff. So yes, he's thinking of maybe doing that tomorrow. I'm gonna go turn opacity back on here. And then I'll go and save my Necromancer guy out. And we'll go start a new project for the, for Jinx. Document resolution, I'll leave that on this. Normal map format, I think I can just switch it directly now to OpenGL, I believe. Import baked maps, I'll do that as well. Those are Jinx's maps here. And of course, an OBJ would be good as well. <laughs> the one without the mats. All right. Tired in general, Sage, or tired of Unreal Engine? It's when you do 20 hour days on your computer. <laughs> That's when that happens. Shall we, John, do you think it makes a difference to bake the maps now versus um, when the maps are applied? Not really, right? I don't think there's a difference. I might just go and bake the mesh maps now. At uh, I might use 2K and I'll use the HD mesh here. So that's Jinx with mats goes here and we can go just go bake everything. <laughs> can we do this in half an hour, boys and girls? Let's try. Oh. 
Where are you vacationing then, WebSoul? And where, where do you live in the country? In Sorry, not in the country, in the world. <laughs> Just out of curiosity, I think, uh, Sage, you're here on the east coast of the US somewhere, I believe. I'm also east coast US. Fugazi, 3D Megaverse, he's in the UK. We're kind of this global community. Daja is in Canada. Oh, you live in the Netherlands. Okay, <laughs> good stuff. Are you vacationing in the Netherlands somewhere else or are you, are you out of the country? Wonderful that you can join. It's just really, really nice. So cool. We're just this global community. There's not that many of us. That's really cool. <laughs> and we come together at the oddest hours of the day as well. That's just so cool. Midjourney, yes, Midjourney is um, is an AI kind of generative program. So it's uh, it, you you can give it something like you know brian said bob ross space alien it goes and calculates for 30 seconds and gives you a picture that is actually so good that it's crazy but you can so it it, it interprets words and turns them into creative pictures crazy crazy stuff mid-state okay oh yeah other side of the country to the two hour drive got you we used to go to the netherlands a lot when i was young my uh my father was from from what we used to call Holland back then, which is no longer allowed. <laughs> we're not we're not calling it Holland anymore. I might make it uh, not feel the view, but the focal length, like 80 here. Looks a little more flattering. Yes, we used to go from uh, from Bremen. That's in Germany. That's where I. That's where I'm from originally. We used to go from there to uh, Woerden. That's by Utrecht, as, as you know probably. <laughs> project not j but no where are my maps man your assets where are my maps i could have sworn i imported maps here oh it's because they're not in uh in uh, there's a text there we go <laughs> Visual dreams! East Coast US for you too! Welcome neighbor! I'm also East Coast US. I'm down here in South Florida. Where it's nice and hot actually, but not. Um, thanks John. <laughs> well spotted. <laughs> I was just testing it, you know. <laughs> I'm, um, it, it is hotter in the UK right now than it is in South Florida. Can you believe it? It's crazy. What has climate change done to us? So we have kind of, we're, we're heading into hot summer and usually August, September is when it gets really, really hot for us. But uh, right now it's just a regular kind of 28 uh, degrees here. And it's, it's nice. Default base color. That is, that is, what is that? That is her body, I think. I think so. Should have named that better. Left click and drag. Onto here, onto base color, on the body. Yes, it is the bikini body. Cool. Left click and drag onto the arms, base color. Then face, left click and drag onto the face. Head, left click and drag, that's the back of the head here. And then we have the legs. All right. <laughs> You're on brushes, man. This here is the body. This here is for the arms. This is for the face. This is for the head. This is for the legs. All right. Jinx. Okay. I'll make a new layer here for base properties. Also feel free to spell it correctly. Drag it down here. I'm just going to use the roughness for now. And make it less shiny. Okay. Oops, no! <laughs> I meant to say group, not remove. Control G also does that. Jinx skin, perfect. So now... F 
fill layer. And let's do the blue and white here. I think that's that would be neat to do. Let's start with the blue first. I'd like I like your idea of picking that uh, hex color. Let's get a get a start with that. with color, hex value, yes, I like, so that's blue, and then we'll go and say black mask, inside mask, put paint layer, Inside libraries, go find my paintbrush from earlier and get going, I'm thinking. If you right click on the group, you can make a smart material. Oh, okay. So that would work, I guess, for all Genesis 8.1 people. That is not a bad call. Actually, that is a very, very good call. I could do that with the Necromancer as well. So I can do this here. And then just say right click and say, I never thought about this, make a smart material from a set of skin textures. That is a great idea. Would it potentially ask me what the name is? No, the name is probably this. Let's see if I can find that now. Yes, Jinx skin, there it is. Ha ha, thank you. Thank you for reminding me. That is a very good idea. And then you can just go and get, get started. Don't have to export the maps again. That is a great idea. <laughs> the name is the group name. Man, good stuff. Do you know, yes, I actually have Pure Ref installed and I've not really, I'm not that familiar and comfortable with it. Uh, maybe I'll leave that for next time. <laughs> It's a fairly simple design. I'm, I'm, I'm okay switching back and forth, but that is certainly my uh, my plan. I bought both the Mac and the PC version. Well, when I say bought, I mean, it is free, but it is, um, I, I threw him some cash because I, I really like that, that effort. And everyone who does things like sculpting, it's just so cool to have the reference directly on the screen. And it is a workflow I want to get into, uh, but I'm not at that point yet. Yeah, because that would be, that would just be so cool to make that maybe i can try it okay let me try it let me try it i'm just gonna go and um do this with uh, so i don't have to zoom in and out i'm just gonna go and grab this out of here like so bear with me carla let's just say this will be saved you convinced me to go to go new places. I'll just call this Aloy Blue White, put it on the desktop. Let's try out Pure Ref. Did I pin it here somewhere? I haven't ever. I totally haven't. I know where it is though. It's in my C drive in the Blender directory because that's how I like to do and here is pure ref did now let me put this actually let me create that as a as a pinnable thing here create shortcut there it is call it pure ref and pin it to start pure ref gotcha <laughs> You do lead people astray. I like it. The, down the wrong path. There's nothing here. Drop some images to get started. Uh, or control H for additional help. As in, when you say drop, I mean... The... Um, the like this in here. Is that... Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay, good. Now what? I'm already, I'm, I'm new to Substance Painter. Don't confuse me with, with pure ref things. Control H for additional things. Right click to drag. 
this around, got you. And then there's also an option to say, keep it window always on top, something like that. How do we do that? Mode, transparent to mouse. I think that's what I want. Like so. And then control T or that there. Perfect. Good stuff. But then... Now I, it's not in the right position. It's This is a longer thing to work out. There are time constraints. Don't say, we'll do it next time. It's cool. We'll do it next time. There's only so much my, my brain can cope with on any given day. And Substance Painter is already kind of overload territory. I, next time, you know? <laughs> so... Blue streaks kind of three to four, first left to right. From that eye over to here. And this is not a uh, design for the, for transparency. It's kind of like this, isn't it? Yeah, kind of like that. <laughs> oh, we can also make totally straight lines, I think, with the shift key. I think, is that is that possible? Yes, that works as well, but I'm not sure if that's what we want here. Good way to get started, I guess. And then we have the same kind of going back. And I think I'll go and uh, break this up a little with the uh, with the same brush in the different in the other color, like so. And then I'll just use very little stroke opacity i can break this whoops break this does this not work anymore our oh, stroke capacity is nearly zero that's that's not what we want so just make that a little paint that out again That could be the blue, and then we'll have the white as well. Same idea, no color. Uh, white, white. I'll just make make my own white. Maybe make it like that. Black mask, and then white is kind of just a streak here and a little bow and slap over there. Let's see. <laughs> This is white. <laughs> Bow and slap kind of over here. I might use the steady stroke for that. And then there's kind of a whip underneath here, so it's kind of this. Yeah, I think I don't really like it. Let's 
Oh, was I even on a paint layer here? I didn't have a paint layer in here, did I? Hmm, uncool. That, and then we want a paint layer in there. Yes, like that. <laughs> Let's try again. So there's this streak here. And then we have something like, whoops, something like that here. I think I really like the purple design. I'm not entirely sure if I like this this kind of white design here. But let's see if we can break it up with that with those magic um, with those magic masks we've been we've been hearing so much about or learning so much about today <laughs> let's see this is jinx now jinx v1 cool so can we all remember how to do it i believe if we stick with the blue first let's add a generator to this i think that's how it worked in the generator, we're going to say mask editor, I think. <laughs> and the first thing we'll do is we'll display the mask and turn down the curvature. Now we go. and find ourselves the first texture here and put an actual texture in it, don't we? Image, there we go. And let's make that. Hmm, cloth fold large, let's try it out. Um, first hurdle. How do we make it show up to begin with? Maybe texture opacity. Does that work? It doesn't. What a shame. Where do we do that again? Thickness, that wasn't it. The blend mode, was it the blend mode? Right, 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 cool. So on the, that was here, was it? Set that to multiply, was it? No, that wasn't it. This here wasn't it either because we're just looking at the mask thing for now. Blend mode, that was, was that up here somewhere? In the texture settings. In the right. Right, see? Completely forgot immediately. Thank you, John. I'm so glad that you're here for this. This is so nice. Great, so we've got that. Then we've got the scale aspects and stuff. That's that's cool. So now opacity controls that. Perfect. Awesome. Scale. Which makes me think we probably have chosen the wrong texture to begin with. But that's cool. It's all a learning curve. Let's pick something else. Blending mode first. Blending mode was inside the texture. Cool, cool, cool. You do it 150 times and it grows on you, you know? It's it's how it works. But you have to, you have to get through these 150 times, so <laughs> dirt then. Dirt, money, hello. It's no matter how many times this compiles these things, it just doesn't really 
It doesn't really remember, does it? It always has other cache issues. Hey, that might be cool. Um, so in in texture scale. Interesting. <laughs> repetition, repetition. That's exactly right. Um, if I want to see what this looks like on the material. He, oh, hang on. No, we had to, we, there was something else we wanted to. Uh, we need to mask this off, don't we? We want to make sure this isn't applied everywhere. We want to make want to make sure this is applied to uh, to my face paint. Blend most on the mask editor. Multiply. Yes, indeed. Doesn't help that we have four separate options for blending modes, does it? Doesn't really help. Adds to the confusion. But yes, that makes sense. This made sense, that made sense. Then there's also that here later when we come to height bits and pieces. Man, this is tough. This is tough. Let's have a look what the material looks like. So, um, is that what we want? That's not what we want, is it? <laughs> yes, exactly. It's like a real dual edged sword, isn't it? It's a real dual edged sword. Is, is more options always better or perhaps not? I like what the, what I, I love what you can do though. That is just, that's just insane, isn't it? The stuff you can do. I'm going to go dispense with the height. This time I just go for roughness. And that was not applied here. That is applied here now. I think, is it that we're going to add fill layer in here. Is that how we do that? Clearly not. No, hang on. Still thinking about it. Yes, that is what we do. In this fill layer, we're just going to use the height of that and into the height channel. We're going to go and put something else like dirt four was kind of cool. Dude, you knew this already. Why are you compiling these things? I've given you, you're only using 64% of stuff. Maybe this one here, directional noise. Let's use that. Let's use directional noise. Play around with the direction a bit and see what happens. You need to head for bed. No worries, WebSaw. Hey, thanks for your subscription again. I really appreciate that. Wonderful that we can come together. Have a good night and have a good trip back home. John, I don't think I've built you a shout out yet, but I will do that um, after the stream so I can I can go and shout you out with just a simple command. Like, which one do you prefer? Is it like exclamation mark John you could have or you could have exclamation mark Fugazi or you could have exclamation mark 3D Megaverse too long to type out, but 3DM would work. <laughs> we will get this sorted. Let's make it uh, not quite that much smaller, but like maybe like that rotate around like so I like is that the right way around no it's not it's gonna be like that maybe oh then we need to talk about the tiling And then we need to talk about the intensity, but that we do up here now, don't we? That is under height. And then this, we just go and put that down. Beautiful. Dude, the stuff you can make with this. I 
unbelievable. So um, if I wanted to, I think actually, there, I think more color is, is better. Sweet, I think there's something on the ears. I might just go and uh, paint that out here. I think I may have accidentally just got the ears here. That and also I think this, I don't want it to go all the way uh, back here. Make that edge a little a little rougher here. We don't have the same problem here. Well, we kind of... There. Oops. thin out some of these um, these portions that would otherwise look a bit too uh, too strong here okay if we can go and repeat this on the white Let's see if we can it was just this wasn't it so copy Taste, maybe. Yes, that does that. And so now also the same thing here. Is that also possible with that fill layer? Copy settings, go to that. Go to paste. And it works, doesn't it? So in here now, I can just go and, and change the rotation around to kind of this way. Or also. Make that less, use a different texture altogether. Use a different texture altogether. There, and while we're here painting things out, I'll just thin out the edges here a little. On the mask, like so. Oop, substance painter struggling just a tad. Imperfections are key. Maybe that was a bit much. No, no, that's not good. Also, the music doesn't help. In fact, let's go back to one of my favorite playlists here. Dreamy Beats. I like it. Let's go to Dreamy Beats. Much better. <laughs> Are we maybe okay with that? I think I think I'm good here. I'm, I think I'm good here. I'm gonna go and export this and um, set up that geo shell for this, just to see what it looks like in Dash Studio. See if we go and uh, make these. Give us the. Give us the opacity properties here. Make that invisible, and also totally forgot about this on here. And on there. We have opacity. Goody. Um, not sure what's happening on the eyes, but I suppose. Don't know what's happening on the eyes. But it shouldn't be there. That's that's all I can say. It might be that we've actually painted on the eyes. That's possible. Could that be? Could be a map issue somewhere. 
Let's see what happens on export. See what this looks like inside Dash Studio. And that's another part of the puzzle here. I'll oversave it, not oversave it. I'm going to go make a new version here. <laughs> My brain is turning, absolutely. <laughs> it is literally the brain that you can see. <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. Export textures. I could just go and pick a different um, directory rather than the default. I could do that. That might make my life a little bit easier. I'll call this map blue. Then I don't have to rejig those later. It's not going to be... It's going to be this for the face paint. That's cool. And we don't need this opacity anymore. We're all, we're all good here, I think. Goody, that is face paint. That'll look like that. Output directory is empty, I like. Go for it! All right! Mm -hmm. Ah, the walkable collision voice. The walkable collision box. Easy mistake to make. <laughs> That kind of sums up much of 3D work in general, doesn't it? So much wasted time. It's not so much, so I find very often that I'm in these programs a lot, spending a lot of time with them, much like in a video game. But unlike a video game, the usually you want something to show for it on the, you know, once you've invested five hours into something, then it would be nice to have something tangible on the output. With video games, it's not like that. You just had a good time and then that was it, you know. But with 3D programs, often we expect that there, that there should be something like a thing that we can show people or that we can, you know, like a screenshot or like a render or like a little project that we can make. And I often find that even with 3D, that is not the case. You spend a lot of time working, your brain's hurting and you're really exhausted and you think, yeah, and that was, that's the day gone. <laughs> Have I learned something? Well, hopefully. <laughs> that is always what I like to take away from it. At least it's something, hopefully, that we've learned. Isn't always the case. So sometimes, it's not like that either. Okay, so she doesn't have a geo shell yet. I think I can also go and uh, reset the pose. Zero figure pose so that she doesn't have the, the UV prep pose, perfect. So then geo shell, create geometric shell, parent to this. I'll call it face paint. Make jinx unselectable, but make the face paint selectable. And then on the shell visibility properties surfaces, we don't need arms, body, cornea, ears. Actually, maybe ears, ears will leave on. Eye moisture, socket, face we leave on, fingernails, head we don't need. That's the back of it, I think. Head we don't need. Hello. <laughs> Still thinking about it. <laughs> it's true, it's true. It isn't wasted time. No, you're right. It's not so much wasted. It's it's more like the learning process. And I also think that is very, that's often very, very um, exhausting to take all this in. So I need to make notes, literally written notes. That's the only thing that works for me. And that's also something I can go uh, back to later. As well as videos. So videos I also make for mainly for my own benefit. If there's a technique I don't want to forget, I really like the idea that I can go there and then um, uh, watch something that, that I know I've recorded when it was working and that really reminds me of, of how things were working. Something about the eyes is not working well. Sklara, there we go. And also... Eye resist, there we go. That's, that's also... Let's switch that off as well. Okay. Uh, while we're here, mesh offset. 
I'll just add one extra zero and then a shell is a bit closer there. Okay, so now with that. Oh, these are not um, these are not irate properties. They don't for some reason they can't, don't come in that way. There we have it. Let's see if this works. Base color, check. Yes, <laughs> yes. Getting there. Did we have a roughness map? I, I don't know if we had, I think we may have. I don't remember. Don't think I did anything with the roughness channel, did I? <laughs> it's it, that's, that's the way to do, isn't it? And then if other people enjoy the same topics, hey, perfect, that's a great benefit. But yeah, first and foremost, and I think that's often that's often an, un an overlooked um, key benefit. If you, that's kind of the motivation behind anything and everything. If you make it for your own benefit, you have a very different motivation than somebody who does it for views or for likes or for other reasons, like for money or whatever. That's that's a problem. If you do it for you, that's the right motivation. I didn't touch roughness, did I? So perfect. I'm gonna go and uh, and just go and turn this to a kind of a base value. Then I thought I didn't. I did. I think I didn't for I'm just gonna crank it up a little. So maybe I'll leave it a tiny bit shiny just overall then. See how that looks and then uh, the opacity That's this here. <laughs> we'll say 0.8. That's that, and it's a bit shiny then. And we have beautiful normals. I'm hoping. Do we? Yes, we do. Oh, even filament shows it up. Isn't that cool? It's trying, it's trying. <laughs> How's Ira faring with this? I think uh, Sage is the same username. It's also Sacred Sage 88 on YouTube. Kemi, woohoo! The Night Owl, how you doing? Good to see you. Hey, goody, let's go copy the face onto ears. I don't know if I've painted anything there, and on the lips. I think are they a bit are they a bit strong here? Might be a bit. I might just turn it down a little. I could like I did before. I could I could, I suppose, um, try instead of this, I can try the, the, um, misappropriate the opacity in the bump. Um, hello. Like, so, no, you don't want to do that. You still thinking about it? You don't want to do it. It's cool. Okay, it's fine. <laughs> we don't have to. We, we, we don't have to. Yeah, I think maybe the the um, texture was a little too large that I used there. I think maybe that's a bit... It could do with another, with another overhaul. But in principle, it works. And I've learned so much today. So that's really, really cool. Right? And also, yeah, let's go make the... Let's actually put some good lights on it rather than the defaults. Let's just see if we can have something like uh, like uh, the click and render are always a favorite of mine. Pastel edition might work. Yeah. 
yeah, a little bit more fine work, but I think as a as a kind of a workflow technique with the stuff you can make, it's just awesome. Super, super awesome. She's also not HD right now. Let's go make that happen. I think she is not. This is just still the SD model. Yeah, high res. Come on. <laughs> Let's do that. I like also maybe it's too shiny. Um, yeah, glossy, so 0.7 maybe. Make it a little rougher. What does it look like with full opacity with no skin blending underneath it? Also not bad. So that's 100%. Also not bad. I think maybe 0.8. 0.9 something just so that we can see a little bit of skin underneath it also also cool very cool i'm hooked on this me too sage me too that would be great you guys collaborate that is a great great idea that is a really cool idea also to you know establish larger audiences all across our channels great idea hey my friends i'm going to call it a day i'm just going to go and uh, save this out in as a wearable preset so this here oh that's going to be in here isn't it this is going to be a wearable uh sums wears wearable there it is you must select of course a figure otherwise that ain't gonna work this is blue white or oh, face paint blue white i think face paint blue white there not this, but that. Accept. Let's do this again soon. <laughs> Let's do this again soon. I'm not sure if I'll do it uh, if I'm if I'm going to be back on Twitch tomorrow, but perhaps later in the week. That is definitely possible. I'll let you know on the Discord, and um, hopefully ahead of time. Might also just pop up spontaneously around 4 or 5 p.m. Don't forget tomorrow afternoon, Brian might check out Mid Journey on uh, his stream on his channel on YouTube. That might be cool. I think Brian has a shout out. Uh, Sage and uh, John don't currently, but you know I can I can make that happen. Leave it with me, my friends. Thank you so much for dropping by and spending the afternoon with me. It was really really nice. Thank you, John, for all your tips. It is really it's a privilege to learn this way because it's just you know that is how it manifests in the brain and that is how we can share knowledge with one another. Thank you so much for being here. Have a wonderful night. Take care. Bye bye.